even before Overhop, we were already family. Because, right. like, we're friends with life. So I consider her as my sister. I love her as much as I love my own sister, you know? So, and we are ourselves. We don't keep pretending or we don't keep... So whatever you see for Overhop is literally us. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all are brewheads? Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C-Certified Brew, and welcome to episode 91 of Beer Night Super Podcast. And today, we are here at Mondial de la Bière, uh, Montreal's, I guess, main beer festival. We're Patricia. I'm so sorry. I Betia. Tatia from Overhop. Guys, thank you so much for uh, hanging out. Thank you. Um, so we're at the Overhop stand, so we're going to do a little bit different this time. We're going to run through the beers in here, and then we're going to go somewhere a little quieter and get down to, uh, to business. Um, first of all, you guys, everything you're doing is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to hearing this story about how you figured out uh, how to crack Ontario in Quebec as far as getting the beers in both provinces and blowing my mind uh, since I first heard of you guys. Yes. Looking forward to that. Um, and uh, so let's, let's run through these beers and we'll get that done first. So, first of all, these glasses are crazy. What's up with them? Like, like now, it started with the project that we have that's called Overlap. So we just found it was going to be like really match with the, with the concept of being in a lab. So whenever we do a festival like this big as Mundial de la Bière that we do here we do in Rio too, yep. we, we do have new recipes that we like to taste. And that's the concept of having a lab to taste wow. new recipes. We really want to, to, to study the, the behavior of different hops. So the overlap, the overlap, the main idea was to see which, how each hop was going to behave um, on top of the same base recipe. So we just try to have the same base, base recipe and do a single hop beer. So the first one we did in Quebec was with a hop 100% Quebecois, and then the second one we're going to have just a single hop or something different, where we can uh, analyze how they behave. Yeah. That's really smart. I like that. Single hop beers are great. So these were, you guys are pouring 13 beers today, 11 directly here, which is significant being you got two cans in the mark, three cans, three, because it's the dark. Uh, right beer. now, yeah. Right, right now we have, now we have four. Four? Five. Yeah. Five? Five, yes. Oh, what am I missing? Because I, the, the first We two. just released yesterday the Q Cascade one, the oh, overlap. One, yeah, 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 I'm going to yeah, give yeah. it to you. And uh, Mad Which is an American blonde. Yeah. Oh, and that was this great, one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So which which uh, should we start with? Uh, I guess the blonde. Yeah, Mad Menu. Okay. So just me drinking. It's very selfish. Um, so this is a blonde? That's a blonde with the Belma, Belma hops. Really happy for a blonde, I like. Yeah. <laughs> Normally blondes are very like, Very forward. light. Yeah? Very light. What's the ABV? It's five. It's a summer beer. Oh, yeah, nice. Just drink in the pool. Okay. Yeah. And why'd you go for a blonde over like um, like a lager or a Pilsner or something like that? We, uh, we ha already have uh, another beer called Sweet Sofia back in Brazil, which uh, we always like to, to play with the names of our children, of, okay. of the brewers, of the, of the family. We are six, six partners. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we have an American Blonde in Brazil, Sweet Sofia, and we wanted to honor my, my, my child, Manu. And so we, we went again for the same concept of having an American Blonde day but with a different model. That's great. Um, I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. What, would, what would be the next uh, um, logical step? I think I would. Yeah, La Passeau Sieux. Okay. This wine. Uh, that's uh, that's the one I we distilled hazy. That's a collab with Oshlag. Okay. We Ooh. distilled hazy and uh, we put uh, oak chips into this distilled hazy. And okay. then that's a passion fruit sour with the oak chips infused into distilled hazy. Damn. <laughs> and by the way, we tried the distilled hazy yesterday. It was yeah. just... Was yeah, good. Wow, my God. I'm a little bit too strong. <laughs> <laughs> what did it come oh, out of? Like, did you, did you measure the ABV? Um, I, I, we didn't measure the ABV. Probably he did. I, I'm not too sure which one was it. But like, it was intense. Super intense. <laughs> Even worse than Kasha's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sell that? Can you, like, is that a product you guys are looking to move into? Um, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. We haven't thought about the idea yet. But I, like, I really like it. I'm not a big liquor guy, but I really love it when breweries go and, and make... Yeah, what's like? What's like? Does that? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do a flow the IPA. Oh yeah. 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 So it's like a like a vodka, like a very strong, happy vodka. Nice. Yes. Have you seen that? Yeah, they distill their IPA as well, and then they do this kind of yeah. spirit. Interesting. I didn't even know you could do that. Like, just take what you take the water or something, or you take the pre-fermented. Sorry, just before it's finished, yeah. and then distill it. Yes. 
Yeah. And what does that do? It just peaks up. Yeah. What do you do to distill it? Is it like an intense process or is it... Do you know much about that? I don't know Jack. Yeah, I don't know much about it. I know that the, under the distillations... Yeah. They do it. Whatever. Yeah, well, that was their part in the collab. That was their, yeah, that was their part. <laughs> This is fantastic. This is um, much more like uh, lighter than I thought it would be, because um, with the you said the chips and stuff, I'm not getting it's not too juicy. What no, is it? Is it yeah, low? six percent. Six. Six. Yeah. Okay. It tastes lighter than that, and it's got passion fruit. Passion fruit, yes. Love passion fruit. Sour passion sour is a beer of the summer. Yeah, I love it. Um, so next one. Um, uh, let, let's try this first. Uh, fantastic. It's the Copa de Tranqui. Thank you. Oh, that one is very tart. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes. It's the Brazilian fruit one? Yeah. Yeah, tell us about that because that sounds so sick. So that one is a sour, which is called, it's a kettle sour called Caterina Sour. Caterina. It's a style of sour that was developed in the south of Brazil okay. in a city that's called Santa Catarina. That's why the name. Okay. And uh, on top of that, we try to add typical or tropical fruits. So for this one, we add a fruit from Amazon, which is called Cupuaçu. Okay. It's very tart. And some strawberry as well, just to give some out. It nice. reminds a sour sauce. The yeah. Sour, oh, yeah. I was going to say, what does it look? Is it like it's, a little spiky? It's big. Yeah, it's big like that and uh, creamy inside. Creamy inside, yeah. yeah. We do everything with Cupuaçu, like juices and everything. Yeah, sweets and, yeah. Amazing. The smell that you, you, you yeah. get is from the Cupuaçu. Yeah. That's, that's the what smell. you're getting? And the darkness yeah. that sometimes you can feel it here. Like yeah. I'm getting the strawberry, but it's kind of like a, it's like a complimentary flavor rather yeah. than yes, like a dominant. Yes, yes. Do you know acai? Yes, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. that's so we, Brazil, too. Yeah, people yeah. eat acai with other fruit. It's just like kukosu. They We like to mix, to blend it like a smoothie yeah. Yeah. With, with strawberries. Are you canning this? We are bottling. Bottling? Even better. Yeah. This is amazing. It's so sick. <laughs> and the label is sick, too. Yeah, it's going to probably be yeah. released in Quebec next week. Yeah? Yeah. Almost good timing then. Yeah. So by the time this will come out the following week, so yes. go get it. Seriously. <laughs> so this, this one is Kalteratem, which means uh, Cobra in German. Cobra, it's okay. A, it's a goza with uh, pure lime juice. Ooh, right. Interesting nose. Yeah. That's like a popsicle. Yeah. In the summer days, very so, hot. So I just feel like having this with a tequila shot <laughs> on the side. Yeah. We should have brought tequila shot. We should have brought, yeah. <laughs> I could totally, wow, that's way more even tart than uh, that one. And it's yeah. absolutely good with tequila, I can taste and that. And we brewed that in Brazil too. So the guys, they brought the, the bottle from Brazil yep. and you, we could see the difference because um, here we didn't use uh, totally um, like the whole the whole amount of limes that the guys use in Brazil. Okay. Because in Brazil, limes are much easier than here, right? right. And But they're both very good. Yeah, very good. That's sick. I didn't, no, no idea you guys were this fire on the sour yeah. game. Like, and we use uh, sea salt too. Nice. Oh, actually, yeah. 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 Nice, nice. Fantastic. All right, so the last one here is uh, Dark Forest Sour. It's our oh, favorite. Yeah. Yeah. It's 7%. It's a collab with Ooh, Rockbird. Okay. Uh, Rockbird. They're, they're Rockbird. Rockbird. Yeah, you're going to have their beers in the VIP room. Okay. They are very good. They're very big in sours in Brazil. Okay. They, they, they've got metals too. And uh, so that's a dark sour ale with 7%. Okay. And we used uh, dark cherries. Dark, dark berries. Cherries. Dark berries. Okay. I'm wondering what I'm getting here. Raspberry, blueberry, cherry, cherry and strawberry. And blackberry. 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 Yeah. What's the nose I'm getting? It's very like, it's like black forest cake or something. Yes, yeah. that's the concept. But that was the idea. Once we developed yeah. this recipe, it was to pair it with like a dark forest uh, And the, the guy, uh, the, our, our partner yes. here, the... Um, the food that we have from Brazil, yes. he made a, a, a cake with dark cherries for us to, to eat so together. Nice. Yeah. This tastes really like, yeah. I really like when um, I've seen it a few times, like high ABV stouts with um, kind of similar fruits, usually it's like raspberry, cherry, strawberries and stuff. You get the exact same vibe, just with like a sour edge to it. Fantastic, 7%? 7%. Yeah. The name of this beer is Dark Forest. Uh, it's Dark Forest Sour, just to resemble the cake. Oh, okay, Maybe that's where I got that yeah. thing in my head. That's fantastic. Um, after only, because I only tried the... The hazy and the, um, the double IPM. Yeah. yeah. So that was all I had, I tried. I know, you know, of course, we talk on social and I'd yeah. seen what you guys were doing, but I didn't realize. It's hard to tell. Like, I just didn't know this was going to be this sick. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Great work. Guys. Even though we are over half, we have to, we have to try to renew. Yeah. Of course, right? We, come from, we still love our hops. <laughs> we, we come from the home brewing scene, right? We were, it used to be home brewers. We used to brew together in a group, like my husband, oh, right. me, and, and uh, our head brewer. And uh, so we, we like to, to go around all the, all the styles, like to try 
right. a little bit of everything. Yes. Not keep it specific. Yeah, that was one thing. I wasn't sure if you guys had like a lane or not. And based on the name, like you said, I kind of thought, and the first two beers were, and then the third, I guess, was the dark IPA. So it was kind of in that vein, which is smart because that's what people want to drink anyway. Yeah. So you got to come out with those type of beers. But, yeah. Um, some, not a, a lot of them don't have, a lot of breweries don't have the, uh, what, like, the capability to do the sours just because of the facilities and you yeah. can't separate it and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess Oshlad is great for that because there's a whole, everything is coming out of that. Yes. So they're able to, like, yeah, we can, also did a brew the Pasoy Limited. Oh, nice. This time. So yeah. you're splitting a bunch of stuff. Right? Yeah. For, for yeah. Montreal, we, we needed to find uh, another partner. So, so. Yeah. yeah, because it was like they were a little bit busy. Obviously, they're in the summer. is the busiest time of the year. Yeah, and right. it's super fun. So you know, if you really need it, you can. So it's not like an exclusive no, we, contract that's we, we are exclusive to them, but we can also... Say, hey, I need, yeah. I need extra yeah. space. Yeah. And yeah. there was a, was a one-off. Yeah. No, and they're super fun with that. Like, they were, they were busy for Everybody's the summer. Everybody's friends. Friends, right? Everybody's yeah, it's friends beer, right? in the craft beer industry. It's, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely been, uh, I, can t- I can see that. Everyone's always really cool to work together. I've heard very, very good things about um, how Overhop works with, sorry, how Oshlad works with, yeah, with, with all the rules and stuff. Yes. Apparently they're just fantastic. Yeah, and you know, in Brazil, the craft beer scene is pretty much uh, contract brewing because we cannot have group clubs in the city of Rio de Janeiro. Really? Yeah, you can have bars, you can drink everywhere you want. You can, you, you can crawl in the street, but you can't have a brew pub <laughs> really? in the city of Rio. So everybody needs to brew outside in the mountains or by the shore. Or like, and, you know, and then bring places, it in. And then bring it in. Yeah. So we do have like comparatives, like where you go and brew. Right. So everybody, Mondial de la Bear in Brazil is five times bigger than this. In five days, uh, they attract 200,000 people. It's amazing. It is real out it there, is, right? It is wild. Just like a We are really yes. close. <laughs> yeah, we're all crazy people. Yeah, but um, so that's it. Like we, we we embrace the craft beer scene and uh, contract brewing in a different way that we have here sometimes. Like Quebec is much more open-minded for that, but in Ontario, I do feel like people like look at us. Oh, you're contract brewers. Oh, yeah, we are contract brewers, but we go there and brew. Like my husband and Tati, they come here pretty much every week. To brew, and, yes, yes, yes. They drive right. and come, come back down. driving yeah. right. in one day. Oh wow, yeah. that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but we care, but we care. We care. See, that's amazing. I'm, I'm it's part of the talk. right? I guess yeah. you got to do it. It's tiring though. Yeah. The thing, yeah. We'll get into that probably more outside because that's one thing that always bugged me about Ontario. Is that Quebec's been pretty cool about contract brewers, but yeah. Ontario has this like hang up about it, yeah. and it's really frustrating. Yeah. It's just, like you don't understand. What do you want everyone to come and drop five million dollars on a brewery yeah. immediately with no brand? Yeah. Yes. Like tested on the market, and uh, yeah. I just think it's just such a backwards thing. And it's, it's yes. like obviously we want to have our facility, but uh, the contract brewing is a good way for you to start. Try the market, see how people are going to react. We can try new recipes as well while we still plan accordingly to have the facility we really need. Right? right. That makes much more sense. Um, I love it. I think it's just really cool. And yeah, I really want to get into how you guys have navigated it. I guess it's sort of you're alluded to that that I did not know that Brazil was such a contract. Focus yeah. environment, yeah. which explains why you've been able to do this. Because I've never seen anyone yeah. do that before. It's gangster. I love it. <laughs> um, so I guess we should probably because I'm going to get into too many questions because I'm very very curious about a lot of things. Um, so maybe we'll uh, outside. Teleport outside. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's All right. Go. Let's do it. All right, y'all. So back at it. We are out here on the terrace. A little quieter, and uh, we can actually talk. We're in the sun. Um, so thank you for the, those beers. Everything was genuinely fantastic. Um, I really like the uh, the sours. Were really really sick. I'm very impressed with what you guys are doing. Your branding game is crazy. Um, I have eight billion questions, which is why I want to cut it off there okay. because we want to go really deep. So what we would normally do at the start of a podcast, we would go into all of your stories. So if you'd like to like. Just start. Whoever wants to start, uh, maybe just introduce yourself and sort of how you got into beer and, and just before the overhop story, and then we'll get into that as a whole. Okay. Whoever start. would like to start. Start from me, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I, I can talk to you in in English, but I, I think Patricia can can talk better. Yeah. So we are. We used to do belong to a a group of home brewers in Brazil back in Rio. Three. The two of us. Two. My okay. husband and and him. Yep. And I used to come. 
with them because I introduced my husband to craft beer. Oh yeah. Because I lived in the United States before, and I, I my friends used to home brew there, and then I I came back and I like to cook, and then I was always buying craft beer. And uh, the craft beer industry in Brazil just kept growing, and it, it came the interest of you know learning how to brew, and then they met. And uh, 14? 2014, and we used to have a group of 10, 10 guys brewing together. Okay. So just to confirm, I, I don't know if we said it earlier. So your husband is Ricardo. Yes. Is that right? Rodrigo. Yes. Because he didn't introduce you, but I'm sorry. Because you were in the last one. So make sure people know who you are. <laughs> yeah. So that's okay. Rodrigo Barufa. We call him Barufa. Yeah. My nickname. My nickname is Barufa. Yeah. Okay. So um, we we were. We, we used to, to produce a home brewers festival right. in, in Rio. Oh, you guys actually ran the festival? Yes. Okay. But it was just like here, it was a blind judging. Okay. So we were competing too. And we used to get the some, some prizes, right? Right. From, we, we had official, official judges, BC, BCP. BJCP. BJCP, yeah. yes. And uh, so he just came up with the idea of having producing it commercially. Okay. And he invited us to be with him, but we were already moved, planning to move to Canada with our kids because Rio is amazing, but it's quite dangerous. And yeah. um, we have three kids, my husband and I have three kids, so we said, you know, um, we can't invest now, but let's see how it how we, how we goes. And we were like just helping them with work. Um, and then just three months after we they, they started brewing commercially, they got to Maros and Mondial de la Bière, which happens in Rio and in Sao Paulo and in Paris too. The same brand? The same, yeah. The same Mondial. Because yeah. you said it before. People. I thought you yeah. were saying like a big beer festival. Yeah, no, oh, that's the okay. guys. That's Janine and, and Carol, the, the, the girls the girls that make Mondial here. They go to Brazil every year and they make Mondial there. It's been Very now smart. seven years. Brazil, six years. They're there for yeah, six years. years. The, 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 the seven. seven. Yeah. yeah. So is that why you guys have like an affinity towards the festival because yes. you participated in home? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they got two medals just three months after they started with Hazy yep. and Dark, uh, Dark Hawk. Right. Okay. So they invited us to to come to to Montreal to showcase the beers because they have the Petit Pub where they bring the beer, the beers that get medals from other places. Right. But my husband and I we were already here in Toronto. We were coming to Toronto, so we said, you know, let's just invest and see how the beers go. And we imported all the beers in cans, from, uh, so from real. To the cost. Yeah, super risky because we, we, it's not pasteurized. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, yeah, now we sure. think this way, right? Yeah. Can you believe it? Uh, IPAs travel. Yeah, all that way. In a, in a ship or you fly? I guess it would be over land. Uh, I think, I think, I think it was. I think it was. Plane. I mean, yeah, plane. plane? Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's not so good. I, I, I bet, yeah. yeah. It wasn't that fresh when we, no. we had it. Yeah, also because we had to send like three months, months in advance. Before, yeah. Yeah. And you got an SAQ. Because it's the SAQ process, right? So I heard about this. Yeah. That's trash. Like, what do they think is going to happen to these people? <laughs> They're supposed <laughs> to go into not going to be that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, why Toronto, by the way? Why Toronto? Why Toronto? Because it's funny because we, my husband and I, we speak English, we speak French. <laughs> we lived in Paris, but I don't know. We, I, I, we, I think we thought there would be more opportunities for us. Right. Uh, like in Canada, you might as well go to the yes. biggest cities. Yes. Uh, and everyone moved after you guys moved because of the company? Is that no, right? no, no, no. So Tatiana was here. Stories? Tatiana was here already. We've I've been, been friends. Here for four years. Okay. Yeah, we've been friends for a long time. We used to work together a long time ago. And uh, she was in she was finishing the business college and I was coming here to study business too. And she said, you know, I wanna, I wanna have my my own my own you wanna speak? Yeah, and then I was talking to them, like giving some tips about the life in Canada because they were already thinking about coming here and I was already here. And uh, we are friends for life. Like now we have family. Yeah, of course. So I was telling them, oh, since you're gonna be here, I wanted to have my own business. So let's start thinking about something. Would you wanna be my business partner? And they were, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's think about something. And meanwhile, all of that that she said was happening in Brazil. Right. So you were here while yeah, I was they were here. Rewards, right? Yes. Okay. And they were there. And we all was talking because of friendship. And uh, so I was asking about the. Uh, I was asking them if they want to be my business partner in something to develop a, a plan. And at the same time, everything was happening in, in Brazil. Right. So Rick came to me and he was, well, this is happening right now. Do you want to be part of it? And at the same time, I said, yes, of course. 
Because it was already, it it made sense. You guys had the team down. You already had the skill set. Exactly. So then it was importing it to Canada. Yeah. Then you realized that importing didn't make sense. Yeah. So then it was like, okay, well, we need to brew here. Yeah. Yeah. And it all happened. We met Morella Mato at Mondial de la Bière last year. And she introduced us to the girls from the Society of Beer Drinking Ladies. Nice. And uh, we met the guys from, from Andre, the guy was here, and Xavier, which is our, who works for us now. He, they introduced us to everybody here in the scene, and we met Oshleg and Shelton and the, everybody. We met and everybody. Ahikana. Ahikana, Ahikana was great at the beginning yeah. as well. So that's why like, I had brought, like Pierre from Harakana. I think um, Noah Forrest from Beerism. There's like four or five people that I really respect in beer hit me up to be like, hey, we need to meet these people. Oh my god, they're, they're incredible. And I just felt like that was like. Even Pierre said that? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, because he's, he's a great of, friend. Yeah, he's a crazy, crazy man. Yeah. <laughs> they're he's going to be yeah. roommates. <laughs> Are you always going to be roommates? <laughs> Are you really? Yeah. Are you in August? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I, you need it. He's the craziest man I know. He's the best. I love him. Yeah. But yeah, I thought he really do a fantastic job. Yeah. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. Francis yeah. is just. But you guys, you guys have come in and you guys have achieved something. Thing that like I haven't seen before as far as coming in from literally like quite a ways away and then just figuring this shit out and meeting the right people and then having them talk about you to other people like you guys have done something really unique I think I think it's because um, what I would say we're, we're family even before Overhop we're already family right. like we're friends for life so I consider her as my sister I love her as much as I love my own sister you know so and we are ourselves we don't keep pretending or we don't keep so whatever you see for Overhop is literally us it's our face right. and it's our interaction is how we treat each other on a daily basis right. it's like we love each other and that's us so maybe people, people feel this way yeah. yeah they feel that everything is natural we are not forcing anything right. so that, that I think it's a big difference we are a, a brewery but I think that in, for, first off everything uh, I believe in people uh, relationships for us is very important uh, it's more important than beer I, right. I can't believe this uh, in our company we believe in relationships yeah, and we that's support each we, other uh, all, all, the all time. of these things are happening right. yeah. that's really cool so we were talking uh, before so you guys so okay let's go back to the story then so you guys are in Toronto you're importing beer letting it sit for three months and you're like this is not working <laughs> yeah so we met the guys from Oshlag they invited us to brew with them and you were like that's kind of not wasn't in the plans you're in Toronto you're in Toronto yes, and yes. Still, and you're about to move here yeah. Yeah. with Pierre like, you didn't say that before yeah <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, so here it was already like settled. <laughs> the um... sorry, distracting. <laughs> How are you? Noah's here. Hi, Noah. <laughs> Great beard, right? Yeah. It's a really nice beard. I love that. <laughs> it makes me happy. I have to take a zip. I'm good. I'm brave. Yeah, do it, please. I know we're me and, and you uh, got the. Continue, sorry. So, yeah, so we, because of the girls also that from from Ontario, we ended up meeting the right people there too. Right. And then we ended up at Common Good. And There's also. The person that knows a different yeah. person. Uh, why don't you Just go to Common Good? Right. So, yeah, okay, let's, let's meet them. How long ago was all of this? A year or so? A year. It was right after the Mondial last year. Last year. Yeah. So, this time last year, you met. You, you, you guys have beer here? Yeah, we just had the cans. I was the beer. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so, so you imported the beer, the old three month old beer. Yeah. The bad, the, the bad cans. <laughs> the bad cans. <laughs> the bad cans. I'm sure that was still nice. <laughs> Not quite as fresh. Yeah. Then you, then you, because you met Oshlag, they were like, hey, why yeah. are you wasting your time importing it? Brew with yeah. us locally, you can use our networks yes. to yeah. distribute. Yeah. yeah, but then uh, the process with Oshlag took a little bit longer. It was just timing. They were busy as well with other breweries, they were expanding their facility reorganizing their structure so it took some time for us to be with them but we are always in contact meanwhile we were researching the possibility of brewing in Ontario as well okay. so it was when we met Common Good which was just the perfect fit they are amazing when we, whenever we go there to brew we literally feel like home fantastic the guys at Common Good they help us out a lot like giving tips or helping whatever we need right and then uh, we were always in contact with our slide and until we start yeah. brewing with them yeah there's right. also a uh, um, Niagara College uh, uh, teaching brewing in, yep. in our lives they, they made the samples the first samples for us that we sent to LCBO in Ontario and because to, of that to take our license yeah. our manufacturer license in Ontario right. and because of that we met the guys from from uh, High Road Brewery they High make Road. Bronin a New England IPA uh, yeah yeah they, oh yeah no, yeah, of course they yeah. helped us a lot Curtis now is the brewer at Muskoka 
Right. Okay. Everywhere was broken. So they, they helped us a lot. If we think about everything that happened in a year, we consider ourselves very lucky because we met Big great people that gave us lots of tips regarding business, regarding the license that we need to take, regarding the market in Ontario, regarding the market in Quebec. Mm -hmm. So we were very lucky. We just, like, we think if everything goes wrong, we made yeah, good friends. We have to go <laughs> because we made That's good friends. That's it. That's all that happens. And it looks yeah. like the friends, I keep hooking you up because I, I was thinking that, so it seems like it was, and it's not taken away from what you've done, I was just really impressed. I was saying before uh, that I've never seen anybody um, figure out the best way to distribute across two provinces, yeah. particularly the two extraordinarily annoyingly difficult provinces <laughs> like Ontario and Quebec, and figure it out in a like so quickly like to be able to get distributed like there's no there's, the only brewery that's in both provinces like regularly is Bose because Bose is distributed here through Group and Bose yeah, through Trans right uh, of course but they, they still took them like 15 months and a, and a crap ton of money to, to get that happening and then on the other side um, on the, like no one's regularly distributed through the LCBO or through any of those systems from here yeah. so you guys are one of the first to have widely available package beer in both provinces so it looks like it wasn't intentional but is that am I accurate by saying that and it's just like the right things happened and you were like sure I should like cool yeah. like we were just coming to yeah. Mondial and then oh we can do it here cool Toronto is that right yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was um, so it was like a little luck we, we were planning, okay, so let's brew here. But then we start finding out everything that came with that, that we couldn't send the beer from one province to the other, all the limitations, the barriers. And then, okay, so what do you think? Shall we brew in Ontario as well and brew in Quebec? Okay, let's, let's try both. Let's see. And then it was unintentional, but then right. at the end when we saw the barrier there, okay, so let's try. Let's let's see how it goes. That's so it sad. worked well. It's just so rare. It's just so cool. That was the thing that impressed me, just because it was like, what, regardless of how it happened, you figured it out, yeah. and that's yeah. just like phenomenal. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. I really thank appreciate you it. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been great. Pleasure. Thank you. Oh, the beers are fantastic. You guys are awesome. I can see thank why you. you're winning out here, and uh, I feel like you will continue to do so. Thank you. It's, it's very very cool. Where can uh, everybody? find you online where can they follow you so online we have a website it's overhop.com they can find us on Instagram overhop Canada or okay. Facebook overhop Canada as well if yep. it's for Brazil it's the overhop brewing okay I wasn't sure what the yeah the Instagram yeah. and Facebook for Brazil is overhop brewing yep. and for here is overhop, overhop Canada but we do have access to both of them so yeah Okay. But like for language barriers, we need to have separate, yeah. right? We're not Portuguese, say, English, English, It also Spanish, releases yeah. what's available yeah. in each country. In each country, yeah. Right? yeah. I wasn't too sure. Yeah. And uh, the website is just one, overhop.com, and there is the flag, so you can choose yeah. either yeah. Portuguese, yeah. French, or English. A lot of so each one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so each one saying what, what is in where. So in Ontario, you have there the beers available in Ontario, there. Quebec available in Quebec, and Brazil available in Brazil. That's really smart. I love it, guys. I wish you much success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, if you guys enjoyed the episode, chuck us a big fat thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. Uh, follow us on social media at the AOS Podcast. Check out the long form audio so we can you can hear more conversations with extremely attractive people like these ones right here. Uh, that is it, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Get in ya.